So my still MS-170. You've seen it before in other videos. I was just having a sharpen up uh, with the Granberg uh, chain sharpener and I thought well as I had everything out I might as well just uh, do a quick review on the modifications I've made to this little saw. So I've added some metal spikes. I've added a side chain adjuster removed the original which is in the front here and it's now in the side and I've also experimented with having a seven tooth rim sprocket instead of the standard sprocket that's on there that's a six tooth also I've changed out the original bar the Volumatic Mini with the 1.1 mil or 0.043 gauge chain and swapped out with a slightly heavier duty 1.3 mil or 0.05 gauge chain to give you an idea of the differences in the chain to start off with just moving up that fraction of size So on the right there is the Pico chain and on the left is the standard sort of low profile 3 8 They're both 3 8 in pitch, which is why I can run them on the same sprocket. So you can see that the just going up that slight difference, that 0.2 of a millimeter, they are substantially larger links and teeth. Yes, the smaller Pico chain has been sharpened a couple of times, but they are still nevertheless substantially larger. It's a subtle difference in the two bars. For a start, the GB1 is quite thicker and a slightly different profile altogether. A fatter nose and fatter in the sort of fore part of the bar. Both the same length, they're both 14 inch bars. The, the heavier bar and chain just makes the, the saw feel more rugged. That's all I can say when it's cutting. It's only a 30cc saw. So you would have thought that the thinner chain obviously you're removing less material it should perform better but I think the type of chain that it is doesn't perhaps cut as well as the thicker chain so it's a sort of trade-off why did I go over to the Semarin sp sprocket well I did this before I got the, the bigger chain the idea being I was trying to get more speed out of the smaller chain to start off with to see if that would improve its cutting ability. Since I've bought the heavier gauge bar and chain, I run the original star sprocket, which is six tooth, because I find that the saw can't handle the extra curve of the chain with this seven tooth sprocket. It can do it, but you bog down more often, especially if you've got gnarly bits of timber, which for the small types of firewood that I cut is pretty much all the time. With the original chain that came with the saw, I have ground this to 10 degrees. So I've turned it into a ripping chain really. So perhaps using this as a ripping chain on the smaller bar with the bigger sprocket might work. We'll see. So that's the 0.5 bar and chain and the standard six tooth sprocket. And that's a cold start.
043 chain and bar. Okay, I've taken a six star out and put in the seven tooth rim sprocket. I'm going to start off with the 043 barn chain. Also changed the, uh, the end, end for end of the log. Seven tooth O five. Okay, let's see the difference in ripping now. Seven sprocket, 05. Seven tooth O four three.
72043 with the old chain modified for ripping so that's ground at 10 degrees. But it's certainly a difference in the finish of the cut anyway. Much smoother with the 10, 10 degrees. You can see that's the uh, 05 chain. I think it's a bit too, uh, too hungry at the moment. I think I've got the rakers adjusted wrong. But nevertheless. Okay, so I swapped out the seven tooth sprocket back with the six tooth. This is the 043 ripping chain, ground at 10. O four three cross cut chain with the six tooth. Do some ripping. the face I just cut that is the previous face with the ripping chain much smoother that 10 degrees helps massively for finish and lastly back to the 05 it's a cross cut chain but let's try see how it rips with the six six tooth sprocket Just fill that up then, so I'm going to go out and cut some logs, I'm going to do two sets, so I'm going to do one set with this, see how much fuel I use, do a second set with that, see if there's any difference, just as a sort of practical real world example. So this stack here is quite representative of a, a normal sort of stack, ranging in sizes, they're basically branches really, got a few other logs down there. Sort of five inch down to sort of two inch really. And we'll start off with the the larger chain, the O5 chain.
right, just going to check the fuel, how much we've used with the 05 chain. Just going to touch the top of the fuel there. So I can see it. Yeah. That's as better scientific as I can make it. So similar stack here again. Used to be representative. I'll go into the original. Instantly it looks the same. Inch and three quarters there. Inch and three quarters there. About a second. So in a real world example, they're the same in fuel usage. So I've got the two bars here set up with their chains. So that although there's not a lot of difference between them really on the face of it, they are actually fundamentally different for such a small power saw. So let's have a look. So the 050 chain, let's just have a measure of the kerf here. So I have two straight pieces of wood and I'm spanning three teeth aside. So I'm just clamping that on the outside of the teeth to represent the width of the kerf. So the 050, I've got 5.97, let's call that six mil. Do the same on the 043 chain. So I've got 4.7 there. So that makes difference of approximately 1.3 mil. That's getting on for what, 25, 30% difference. Therefore, you make the assumption that the saw's got to work 20, 30% harder with this chain. So both chains share the same chain gauge. So therefore the depth gauges would be set at the same distance from the top of the tooth. And on this case, that's 0.65. So the 050 chain has the same cutting depth as the smaller chain, but it's one and a half, 1 1.3 mil wider, 20, 30% wider. So it's definitely removing more material. That obviously has an impact on such a small horsepower saw where everything's so marginal. So this chain is cutting wider rather than deeper. And in actual fact, for this chain to work properly with this small saw, really these, these depth stops, depth gauges, rakers, whichever you want to call them, should be slightly higher than this gauge suggests. So you're taking a thinner slice off even though you're wider. So it's not unexpected that obviously a, a, th a thicker gauge chain with wider teeth 
it's going to take more material away therefore it needs more effort more power from the saw so it's highly surprising then that uh, reviewing the footage that uh, you can both see and hear the saw working harder and at lower revs with the bigger bar and chain so a review then of the numbers on the playback it's quite interesting to see from my point of view having used the saw for oh, no, 10 12 years now certainly seems uh, obvious that the standard six tooth sprocket allows the saw to maintain its revs and because it's got those revs the chain is going at the appropriate speed as soon as we put the seven tooth on then although this, in theory the chain is going 10 15 percent faster it is actually putting more strain on the power head and so the revs drop but the proportion of revs dropping is more than the speed of the chain with the seven tooth sprocket and so it's actually the chain is actually going slower that's my reasoning anyway which is why the cuts are slower so if you look here we're starting off with a cross cut we've got the six tooth and the the average of the cuts with the 050 was 14 seconds approximately and the 043 12 and a half put the 7 tooth sprocket on they're approximately the same so we have got the 043 is 12.9 050 is 14 so the two numbers haven't really changed between the 6 and the 7 sprocket and so like I say although in theory the chain is running faster here the saw itself actually isn't getting up to the same revs because it's finding it just that little bit more too, too difficult it's too high a geared if you like it's like going up a hill in fourth when really you should be going up in second that's the way I see it so in this instance the times have basically been the same the speed of cut might be higher but the revs are down whereas up here the revs are up speed of cuts lower but they they both work out the same it's a bit more prominent with the ripping we've got the seven tooth on here and as you probably noted in the in the playback of the video the uh, the 050 really struggled with the seven tooth it bogged down quite a lot it took 26 seconds changed over to the 043 20.6 seconds that's quite a significant difference there isn't it and then we put the ripping chain in it's the second faster again at 19.6 but then reduce it down again to the standard six tooth sprocket and we've got faster speeds again across all three three setups so in actual fact the ripping chain 17.6 that's it improves by two seconds on its with the seven tooth in the 043 just a standard cross cut was 18.3 that was two seconds better than with the seven tooth and the 050 well we got four seconds difference there maybe that was a slightly iffy cut but it's a you know it is quicker again so in ripping the six tooth sprocket wins hands down and i think that is purely because it's allowing the the motor to spin up to get into its correct power range in terms of revs uh, but interestingly um, when I was cutting the logs both chains seem to pretty well much perform the same with the six tooth sprocket the 050 being 23.3 043 22.7 I'm going to basically say they're the same because those stacks of logs it's difficult to get them exactly the same isn't it and so just doing all this as an example um, I think I sort of proved to myself really that if I can master sharpening the 043 chain getting that to an optimum sharpness then it seems that it's uh, hard to beat really for this particular saw the only way of getting uh, you know a more robust faster cut from these figures is to up your horsepower but long story short with the stock saw and the stock chain so long as you keep it properly sharpened doesn't seem to be any sort of room to improve its speed and cutting ability because there just isn't the residual power within the power head itself 
Well, I've had fun doing this. I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. See you next time.